All right, welcome back everyone to 12.5. This is part B though. We're going to be talking a lot about planes in space, which is basically like sheets of paper uh, in space, right? Um, okay, so in this section, right, I'd like to be able to define planes uh, and determine what do their equations look like, right? Um, also, I'd like to be able to find where <laughs> sorry, lines and planes intersect, right? So we're going to start comboing these things a little bit. And then finally, uh, the third application is that if I give you three points, I would like to be able to find a plane that hits those three points. Let's get to it. So the first off is the definition, right? The terminology. What do the equations look like? Well, so let's suppose that you have some vector, n, right? Uh, given by, it has coordinates a, b, c, right? Uh, and some other vector that's uh, specifying a point that we want to hit, right? So we want to hit the point r naught, which is x naught, y naught, z naught, or x sub zero, y sub zero, z sub zero, um, right? And so this is the position vector uh, of some point, again, that we want to hit. Then if we just take some r vector, right? So this is x, y, z, right? Not really specifying anything about it. It's just variables here. Then the claim is, we want a set of all points uh, that contains this vector and is perpendicular to n. So if you want stuff that's perpendicular to n, then you would like when you take the dot product, oh no, I want blue. When you take the dot product with n, you would like to get out zero, right? That's what it would mean to be perpendicular to n, right? So we would like the set of all points. So it's a variable, it's all points, but we would like it to include the point x naught, y naught, z naught, right? Or better yet, with a position vector, r naught. So we would like to contain r naught. So first of all, if you plug in those specific values, this will work out, right? Because zero dot anything is zero. And this is a variable, right? So this will give the set of all points that are perpendicular to n, right? The dot product is equal to zero. More commonly, right? So this is, it's a little bit strange, right? This is the vector notation. Again, these are all vectors right here. We're taking a dot product and we're getting zero. But more commonly, uh, this is the vector equation for the plane as specified perpendicular to n through the point P sub zero, which has coordinates x zero, y zero, z zero. Okay. This, right, this perpendicular to n, just as a kind of a heads up sort of deal, this is sometimes called the plane's normal vector. So now we have another word that means perpendicular, right? So perpendicular, aka, you know, 90 degrees, uh, pi over two radians sort of deal. We know orthogonal, and now we know normal. So perpendicular, orthogonal, normal, all mean the same thing. Okay, alternatively, Right? We know uh, the components of n, right? We know that this is a, b, c. We know the components of this piece right here. So this is r minus r naught. So we have x minus x sub zero, y minus y sub zero, z minus z sub zero. So if you were to actually evaluate out this dot product, you would get the equation a times x minus x sub zero, that'd be the first pieces. With dot product, you do plus, right? So b times y minus y sub zero, plus the third component stuff, c times z minus z sub zero, that would have to equal, well, the dot product is supposed to equal zero. So this is kind of a more uh, kind of classic formula for a plane. This is the one that we're gonna be using quite a lot, but where does it come from? It comes from we want the set of points that's perpendicular to a specified vector, A, B, C, and we want it to contain a specific point. Now, sometimes you see people collect all these things, right? So you have like the AX, you have the BY, you have the CZ. So these are all the variable stuff, the X, the Y, the Z, everything else is numbers. So sometimes they take all those numbers and they put it on the other side and they just call this D, right? So quite often you'll see planes, planes look like this. Something times X, something times Y, something times Z is equal to some scalar number, D. Okay, so let's get a little practice, right? Uh, we would like to find the equation of the plane that's orthogonal or perpendicular or normal, right, to this vector right here and contains the point 0, negative 3, 1. 
Okay, seems relatively straightforward. So this right here is, again, my normal vector or my vector that's perpendicular or whatever, right? So that's going to be my A, my B, my C. This right here is the point that I want to hit. This is my X0, this is my Y0, this is my Z0. So if I plug it into this equation up here, I get 1 times X minus 0 plus 4 times y minus negative 3, so plus 3, uh, let's see, plus c times z minus z sub 0 is equal to 0. So personally, you know, if you were solving this uh, e problem on a, a quiz or an exam, this is the way that I like to see uh, answers written, right? Um, because it very quickly I can tell if the answer is right or not. I see all of the pieces here. Uh, but sometimes people can't help themselves, right? They want to simplify down. So they do x plus 4y plus 12 minus 2z uh, plus 2 is equal to 0. And so you get x plus 4y minus 2z is equal to, and if I take all the constant bits, the 12 and the 2, and I move them to the other side, that'd be equal to negative 14. So either one of these, I would say, 100%. Again, I like the first one a little bit more. It takes less work, and I can quickly see if the answer is correct or not. This one right here, once you kind of start combining the 12 and the 2 and all that stuff, it's maybe it's harder to see where that negative 14 comes from. Uh, but either way, right, full credit, and you can see, of course, the second one here, uh, it relates to this one, right? So that D is negative 14. It's just when you take all the constants, you move them to the other side. Okay, so that's the first bit, right? Now we have what do equations of planes look like? Next up, second objective, right? I want to be able to determine when does a line intersect a plane. And the big thing here, uh, these are actually relatively straightforward once you start thinking about them a little bit. But the big thing here is that for a line, you have an X spot, a Y spot, and a Z spot, right? Or X component, Y component, Z component. So you have something that's naturally an X, naturally a Y, naturally a Z, and the plane has a place for you to put it, an X, a Y, and a Z. And so the claim is, well, just substitute in, right? So instead of X, I'm going to put 3 minus T. Minus, instead of Y, instead of Y, I'm going to put 2 plus T. Plus 2 times Z, well, instead of Z, I'm going to put 5T. And I want this to equal 6. Okay, so we have... Uh, 3 minus t minus 2 minus t uh, plus 10t is equal to 6. So let's see, combine like components here. We have 3 and minus 2 would be 1. We have negative t, negative t, and 10t. Oops. Uh, yeah, so negative t, negative t, 10t, so that's going to be 8t uh, is equal to 6. So I have 8t is equal to 5, so therefore t is equal to 5 eighths. So quite often, if the problem says, when does the line intersect the plane, right? The t value, you usually think of this as like time, right? But it wants to know where does it intersect. So I want to know what are the x, y, and z values. I want a point in this case. So you have to be careful with the wording here. So this gives me a time. I would like a point. I would like an x value, a y value, and a z value, right? Well, luckily, now that I know a t value, I have a way to get an x, y, and a z value thanks to my line, right? So if I do r of 5 eighths, plug that in, I'm going to have 3 minus 5 eighths. I'm going to have 2 plus 5 eighths. And the z value is 5 times 5 eighths. And that's going to give me an x, a y, and a z coordinate. So let's see. This is like the same thing as 24 eighths. If I subtract 5 of them, I'm going to have 19 eighths. Let's see. This is like 16 eighths plus 5 more. Uh, that's going to be like 21 eighths. And this is going to be like 25 eighths. So there we go. That's the x, the y, and the z coordinate of where the line intersects the plane. And of course, we can check this with the, you know, the Monroe 3D calc plotter, right? 
Or if you'd like, you can take those values, right? If you're worried you made a mistake, you can take those values. We already know that they satisfy the line equation. That's where they came from. Do they also satisfy the plane equation? Well, actually, let's check. That might be uh, a quick, nice check to do for us. First time through, it's always nice to check our work. So if I take 19 eighths and I subtract away 21 eighths, that's the y value, and I add to 2 times the z value, so that's going to be 50 eighths. The question is, is this the same as 6? So, okay, so uh, 19 minus 21, so that's going to be negative 2, uh, plus 50, so that's going to be 48 eighths. Well, yes, that actually does simplify down perfectly to 6. So that's how you would check your work. You take your answer and you plug it back in uh, to the plane, and we verified that, yeah, that works. So not only do we know the when, but we also know the where, right? So again, the when is at time 5 eighths. This is where. This is the x, y, and z value. Okay. One more uh, question, one more objective for us, right? We wanted to be able uh, to determine uh, an equation of a plane given three points. So I have these three points, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 3, and I'd like to be able to determine what is the equation that hits those three points. So remember, for a plane, we need two things. We need an n value, right? Something that's perpendicular to, and we need uh, some point that we want it to hit. Well, luckily, I have three options here, and actually, any of these options are equally good. I'm gonna choose the option, just the first one, because why not? So I have a point that it hits, and I need a, uh, a vector that it's normal to. So I need a normal vector. Hmm, okay, but I don't have vectors right now. But I could get kind of vectors that go between these points. So for instance, if I called this A, and this one B, and this one C, let's really quick calculate out what is the vector AB, and what is the vector AC, okay? So AB, so I start at A and I go to B. So I start at one and I go to zero, I had to travel negative one. I start at zero and I go to one, I had to travel one. Start at zero, go to zero, I had to travel zero. AC, start at one, go to zero. Start at zero, go to one. Start at zero, go to three. So again, kind of be talking about how much did you have to travel. So now I have vectors here. So I have two vectors and I would like a vector Oof. a vector that's perpendicular to both of these vectors, right? So I have two vectors, a, b, a, c, something like this. And I would like a plane that hits all three of these, right? So I would like something like this, a plane that hits all three points. And of course, those points have the vectors on them. And so if I get a normal vector, to these uh, A, B, and A, C, then the claim is that it'll be normal to the entire plane. So, given two vectors, can I find a third vector that's normal to both of them? The answer is yes, that's exactly what we use the cross product for. So the claim is I wanna take the cross product between these two things. So, negative one, one, zero, cross, negative one, one, three, this should be equal to my n, right? I'm trying to find an n, and I already have a point that we hit. So let's do the cross product. So i, j, k, negative one, one, zero, negative one, one, three. And let's go ahead and calculate this out. We know that we're gonna have some stuff with i's, minus some stuff with j's, plus some stuff with k's, right? And so if we do the minor stuff, so here's, I'm crossing out all the i business. So we're gonna have three minus zero. Erase, erase. Uh, if I cross out the j's, I'm gonna have negative three minus zero. Okay, erase, erase. If I cross out the k stuff, I'm gonna have, let's see, negative one minus negative one. So plus one. So this is going to be the vector three, negative, negative, so positive three, and zero. So the vector three, three, zero, the claim is, is perpendicular to these other two vectors. So this is my n, three, three, zero. So an equation of the plane, 
Well, this should be 3 times x minus 0 plus 3 times y minus 0. Right, so I'm just using, again, this is my a's, my b's, my c's, this is my x naught, my y naught, my z naught, and I'm plugging it into the equation for the plane. So a, b, and c, 0 times, who cares, really anything here is going to be 0. And again, we want the dot product to equal 0. So in this case, it's nice to simplify down. I mean, it's very fast, right? 3x, oh, uh, sorry, I forgot my 1 here. It's, you're probably yelling at the uh, computer screen saying, that's not right. So 3x minus 3 plus 3y uh, is equal to 0. So in this case, we can add 3 to the other side. 3x plus 3y is equal to 3. Or if you'd like, you can write down just x plus y is equal to 1. How very nice. So in this case, uh, let's double check our work. And the way that we're going to double check our work is that we have an equation of a plane now. We want to make sure that it satisfies these three points, right? So let's go ahead and check. So if I plug in the point 1, 0, 0. So, okay, I plug in a 1 everywhere I see an x. I plug in a 0 everywhere I see a y. And I plug in a 0 everywhere I see a z. Well, there are no z's. So is 1 plus 0 equal to 1? Looks good so far. Next point, if I plug in 0, 1, 0. So 0 for x, 1 for y, 0 for z, but there are no z's. So 0 plus 1 equals 1. Looks good to me. And how about 0, 1, 3? So 0 for x, 1 for y, 3 everywhere I see a z, but there are no z's. So yeah, it works out. In all three cases, those three points lie on this plane. They all satisfy the equation. And actually, I prepared for us, right, in order to really check our work, to actually be able to visualize this, uh, I did something in the Monroe 3D calc plotter. Well, not all the way. I was waiting to see what our answer would be. But I plotted these three points, right? 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 3. And so we can see them on the plane, uh, in the space here, right? So there they are. There's one of them. Here's one of them. Here's one of them. And I would like the plane that hits those three points. And so let me go ahead and check our work. But I'm going to go ahead and do an implicit surface here. That way I don't have to solve z equals. There are no z's. That'd be hard. So x plus y equals 1. And hopefully, if we do things right, this plane should have all three points. So hit Enter. Boom. And there it is. We can see that this plane contains all three points. Spin. All right. So there we are. We now know how to figure out planes that contain any three specified points. And this is utilizing the cross product. All right, so that is the end of the video. I will see you guys in class. We will upgrade. We'll do even more with planes. Two planes, we'll have lines, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I'll see you in class. Thanks for watching.